So let's start with the demo now. Okay. Okay. So hope you can see my screen. Yeah, yeah, I can see the one which says uh, IID administration. All right. So <clears throat> before, okay, see this diagram. So this diagram is a distributed setup in the MQ. So the thing is, with the help of MQ, as we just discussed, the sending application and there is a receiving application. If these two applications wants to communicate each other, then MQ will come into picture. What sender application will do is, so this is all is MQ setup. What MQ will do is, MQ will put a message, uh, the sending application will put a message in MQ that will be transported and that will be reached to the receiving application. In between, we will do the MQ setup. That's what MQ will do. MQ will do a point to point transportation between source application and the destination application. That's what MQ is. Now, let's see what is the necessity of IAB by we have, when we have MQ. Because with the help of MQ, we can able to successfully transport the messages from one application to another application. Now the question is why we do need to have another technology called IBM integration bus. I will tell you now, although MQ has the capability of transporting the messages from source application to destination application, there is a limitation in it. The limitation is, for example, if a sender application is designed in a such a way that it can generate and it can understand only HTML type of messages. Because let's assume that is the business requirement of sender application. So it can generate, it can understand only HTML format messages. Now come to the receiving application. The receiving application, it can understand only PDF formatted messages. It can't understand the remaining, the remaining formatted messages. The, just assume that is the business requirement of the receiving application. Now the sending application via MQ, so it has a HTML message and via MQ that HTML message is transported from source application to receiving application. Now this receiving application has received this HTML messages. Now that receiving application has to process the HTML message, right? Then only the business requirement will be fulfilled, right? Yeah, yeah. So now, now so, the problem. Yeah, go ahead. So you say, um, like uh, we have uh, queue manager one and the queue manager two. Um, right. So on queue manager one, uh, whenever we send a message, it it should be always HTML. Right. In HTML format. That's right. I'm but, not saying that uh, queue manager doesn't decide the format. The orbit is designed and decided by the application because it's their message. So what MQ will do is whatever the message comes, that will blindly sense. That's the purpose of MQ. MQ is just like a courier service between the applications. Oh, so whatever message comes to the queue manager one, whether it is PDF or HTML or some XML or JavaScript, whatever it is, just it accepts this and send it. Yes, exactly. MQ can accept what type of message it is. It doesn't take care of the types of message. Okay, so the message format is decided by the application. So a sender application has generated a HTML message. It has now it is sending the HTML message from Q Manager 1 to Q Manager 2. Now the receiving application has received the HTML message, but the problem is what is the business of receiving application? It can generate and it can process only PDF related messages, but it has received a HTML message. So mm -hmm. can receiving application process that HTML message? Definitely not, because the receiving application designed in a such a way that it can understand it and it can process only PDF related message, right? Although your MQ has successfully transported the messages, but of no use because the format is not happening in MQ. The message car, the message conversion is not happening from one form to another form. 
Okay, so this is where I, I become to picture to transform exactly. the message into exactly. what is required. Exactly, exactly. Now I become into picture. For example, on top of this MQ, if we have installed a software called IAB, and if IAB developer designed a logic that whatever the message receives in queues of queue manager to that message has to convert, that message has to transform from HTML format to PDF format. Now that PDF format will be processed by the receiving application. That's where message broker, that's where IBM integration bus come into picture. Okay, so the first advantage of IAB is IAB is used to transform the messages from one form to another. Clear this point? Yes, yes. Okay. Now, the second advantage of IAB is it is used to route the message from one queue to another queue. For example, see this diagram. This is the, the distribution setup in MQ. So, in MQ, the message came to the queue manager one, which is a sending queue manager, that is transported to queue manager two, which is a receiving queue manager, and the message will first land into the receiving queue of queue manager 2 right mm -hmm. where the receiving application is connected and it will process the message but now the problem is in mq if message comes to one queue that will be lies in one queue only there is no mechanism in mq that it can be transported it can be routed to another queue for example if the receiving application is connected to another queue but the message came from MQ to this queue. Now there is a mystery that the message need to be routed from this queue to this queue. There will be the receiving application in processor. So this facility is not there in MQ. When we have IAB installed in this MQ, then we can write down the logic. Whatever the message comes to this queue, that will be redirected to this queue so that your application can process the message. That is what the routing is. Okay, so with the help of IAB, we can route the messages from one queue to another queue. So clear with the second point. Any questions? Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Okay. The the final advantage of IAB is IAB have the capability of storing the messages in the database also. In MQ, MQ doesn't have the flexibility that. It can connect to the database, it can store the message, it can store a copy of message into the database. There is no such kind of facility in MQ. But in IAB, we have that facility. We can create our own database, we can connect our message broker to that particular database. And whenever one copy is processed by the application, another copy we can store in the database so that we can track it at anywhere in the future down the time when we need. So that is another advantage of IAB. So let me recap the need of IAB again. The first need is IAB can transform the message from one form to another form. The second advantage is IAB is used to route the message from one queue to another queue. The third advantage is IAB is used to store the message into the database. So these three cannot be achieved in MQ. But when we have another software called another technology called IAB, we can achieve it. So now understand the necessity of IAB on top of MQ. Yeah, but I have question. Um, mm -hmm. So you're telling me if the MQ uh, cannot store uh, uh, messages or whatever. No, MQ, MQ can store the messages. To database? Can, no. it, can it store no. to the database? Yes, MQ can store the messages, but it cannot connect to the database. It is not connected to what? Database. Oh. MQ can, can store the message, but it cannot store, connect to But the cannot fetch the, the like data from the database. Is that is exactly. Okay. Is that what you're trying to say? It is like one way? Yes, exactly. It's like one way. Once when, the message is gone yeah, from MQ, that it, it is gone. Oh, whereas IIB is two-way, it can store and it can fetch at the same time. That's right. 
whenever message comes to the iib iib can have a copy in the database and then another copy can be processed by the application so that in the future if you want to track up the message we have the database records so from the database you can track your messages fine clear with the advantages now i'm not clear with what you are trying to say uh, about uh, it, the on which point on which point you are not clear i mean this is the point are you saying are you saying the iib gonna put a copy into database and uh, uh, maintain a copy on iib itself or you are trying to say it can store and anytime it it requires it can fetch from the database again uh, which one you trying to say no messages cannot be fetch from the database only the track we can do okay this message came this time this message came from this queue and this can uh, process by this time that information will be there the message won't be there only the record related to the message will be stored in the database understand okay. yeah yeah clear or not yeah 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 i got it okay now let's see now the technology on the flow i mean what what is the technology we are going to use in iib so the first we are going to know about a broker a broker is a main and essential thing in iib so a broker is a combination of execution groups what is an execution group we are going to discuss in the same slide but a broker basically contains the execution groups so below are three main broker process if any broker is there in iib every broker in iib having three processes these three are very very main process of iib if one process is down it means that the broker is down so out of these three process these three process has to up and running then only the broker is up and running if we notice that one process is down it means the broker is down so the process are bip broker bip service and bip http listener so whenever we created a broker and when we started a broker when how can we check that the broker is up and running we are going to get the bip process of that particular broker when that uh, broker is displaying all these the process are up and running then only the broker is up and running if even one process is down it means that the broker is down now let's deal with what is an execution group so broker contains the execution groups so an execution group acts like a jvm java virtual machine for execution of the code so do you know what is a jvm in java yeah uh, yes uh, uh, i think uh, or was it okay. is a kind of server uh, no it's not a server i think um jvm is um uh stand is for java virtual machine and um um where we fetch the logs and uh, okay so let me explain so in java we have a concept called java virtual machine so for example any java developer he has written the code in java now when the code is developed he has to run his code he has to test his code right yeah now when uh, he wants to run java code he needs to have some place in java then in that space in that place the java code can be executed that place is called jvm java virtual machine so java virtual machine is a place where the java code can be run and executed and tested okay in the same way in in message broker 
execution room is a place where your flow can be executed i mean whatever the flow which is deployed by iab admin that flow can be executed in the execution group so execution group is a place where your flow can be deployed and where your flow can be executed that is what execution group in message broker understand yeah yeah, yeah. okay so the broker right so this broker is the combination of execution group a broker can contains number of execution groups there is no limit for that you can you can define how many execution groups you want in a broker and once the execution group is created you can deploy your message flows so execution groups contains the combination of message flows where these message flows are the actual code and in execution groups only these message flows can be executed because execution group is going to act like a JVM. So let's see now what is a message flow. A message flow contains the business logic and the actual code developed by the developer how the message has to be transformed. Now this message flow is the actual code developed by the developer. So the IAB developer, he writes the business code and he develops the message flow. And you know, that flow will be given to the IAB admin. Now it's IAB admin responsibility. We have to deploy that message flow in the execution group. So this message flow contains the actual business logic. Whenever message comes to this message flow, whatever the code written in this message flow according to that code that message will be transformed or it will be routed or it will be stored to the database i mean whatever the logic you mentioned in your message flow that is again completely depends on iib developer not on iib admin iib admin never does any development part only iib developer will do the development part iib admin will do the admin part so IAB developer, he develops the message flow by writing the business logic and give that message flow to the IAB admin. Now IAB admin will deploy that message flow in the execution group. That is what the message flow is. Clear? Any questions? Yeah, except for the under broker. Um, broker can contain combination of execution groups. Below are the three main broker processes. So, VIP broker, VIP service, uh -huh. VIP uh -huh. HTTP rules. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Where we see this, I uh, think, is are they on the node or? No, they will be in the server itself. So, when we create a broker, we need to start the broker, right? Like yeah. when we create a queue manager, we will start the queue manager. When we start the queue manager, a queue manager will be having a lot of processes, right? Yeah. In the same way, when we create a broker, when we start the broker, the broker will have these three processes. And the technical commands, do not concentrate on the technical commands. Right now, just understand the terminology. Just understand about the theoretical part. Techno, I mean, technical things, technical commands, yes, I'm going to provide you in the IAB command line interface session. Okay, what this okay. BIP for? Sorry? What this BIP stands for? BIP, there is no abbreviation for this. There is no acronym for that. It is just like BIP, that's it. Okay, okay, got it. It's a single word. There is no abbreviation for this. Okay. All right. So yeah, for message flow, here is my thing. So IAB developer will design a bar file and give to IAB admin to deploy it. So IAB admin has to deploy the bar file in the execution group. Once the deployment is success, the message flow is auto created. So that is what the picture, that is what IAB admin is going to do. Please, IAB give, me Please give me a second. Yeah. Yeah. 
have this conference will now be recorded. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So the thing is, IAP developer designs a bar file. So what is this bar file? I will tell you. Bar file stands for broker archive file, where the actual business code is written by the developer. Okay. So once code is written, developer design a bar file, and this bar file given to IAB admin. Now IAB admin will deploy the bar file in the execution group so that the message flow is auto created. That's how the message flow is going to be created. Message flow creation means IAB admin is going to deploy a bar file in the execution group. Fine, clear with the message flow. Any questions? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Thank you. All right. Now let's see now the flow in IAB. What is the flow? I mean, from top to bottom. So the first thing, the first major thing is broker. We already discussed what is a broker. So inside, so this broker is also called integration node in the IAB. So before IAB, uh, the name was message broker. So in message broker, we call the thing as a broker. But in a IAB, we call it as an integration node. Okay. But you know, in the industry, people are habituated with the broker only. So let's call it as a broker only. Now, inside the broker, there will be execution group. What is the execution group? We have already seen in the previous slide. This execution group is generally is also called as a data flow engine. So if we call it as a data flow engine, if we call it as an execution group, both are same. Now so inside the, one is the latest broker is the latest. No broker is the older one. Oh okay so okay. integration node data flow engine are the latest names. Mm -hmm. gotcha. But uh, but in the industry people are still call it as a broker. People are still call it as an existing group only because people are habituated with the names. Mm -hmm. So inside the execution group, there will be the application or service. So application, forget about the application right now because uh, application concept is not there in the message broker. It has just introduced in the IAB concept. So forget our application. You will be able to understand when we go to the technical type because to explain about the application in the IAB, that will become very huge for you to understand right now. We'll discuss about it later. And inside the execution group, we will be having the message flow. So the basic flow is first of all, we will be having a broker. Inside the broker, we will be having the execution group. Inside the execution group, we will be having the message flows. That is what the flow is. Clear? Yeah, but is the message flow by itself uh, part of the broker? Or the message flow is like something developed by the developers and uh, deploy to the execution group. That's right. It is not part of broker. It is developed by the developer and it and is the deployed message flow itself is part of application. Yeah. Sorry. The message flow by itself is uh, uh, part of application. Exactly. It's a part of application. So in message broker, how it is is. In the execution group, there will be direct message flows. But in IAB, uh, IBM introduced a small functionality called application inside the execution group, where this application is a combination of message flows. You can name your application, and inside the application, you can deploy your message flow so that you are segregated in a more effective manner. That's it. So, application is not a technical term, basically, it's like you, we are segregating in a more customized way. That's what the application is. Okay. So under one application, you can have uh, uh, any number of uh, message flows. That's right. Under one application, we can have n number of message flows. Yeah. Yes, you are right. Under one application, you can have number of message flows related to that particular application. Fine. Clear the flow now. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Now let's talk about the integration toolkit. So integration toolkit is a development toolkit where IAB developer designs the flows as per the business logic and creates the bar file. So integration toolkit is mainly used by the developers where they can write down their code, they can develop their business logic and they create the bar files. Once the bar files are created in the toolkit by the developer, the developer will share that bar file to the IAB admin so that IAB admin can deploy them. So IAB admin can also do the remote administration using the toolkit. It means that when we have the access for the toolkit in the industry, in the company where we are working, we can also do the remote administration of the progress and the message flows. I mean, instead of logging to every time to the server to notice the health statuses, you just connect to the broker via toolkit and you can monitor them. So it is just like a graphical user interface facility. That is what the toolkit is. Basically, developer will be having more work with the toolkit. IIB admin will be having a very lesser uh, usage with the toolkit. But in this planning, I am going to share you uh, the integration toolkit. We are going to develop a small business flow, a small message flow, and we are going to deploy it and we are going to see how that is going to impact the message flow. Okay, we are going to see that in the time. Yes, so that you you will get a good understanding how developer use the toolkit. Fine? Yeah. Okay. Now let's see what are the responsibilities of IAB admin. So IAB admin has to do IAB installations, upgradations and uninstallations and the administrative activities like the creation of brokers, deletion, start and stop. Also, the exhibition group creation and their deletion, also the message flows deployments and undeployments of message flows. And yeah, deployment of bar files, DSN creation and modification. So, this DSN comes in the database concept. So, IAB can connect to a database with the help of DSN. So, in the DSN concept, that we are going to see how to create a DSN and how to modify DSN properties. So DSN state stands for data source naming. And then performance tuning by changing brokers and execution group properties. So every broker, every execution group is having a lot of properties. So we can change the properties so that the performance can be shown. So how to see the properties? Yes, we are going to see that in the IAB command line interface session. And monitoring the sys logs during and after the deployments. So operating system log monitoring is a very, very important task of an IAB admin. Whenever we deploy something, how can we understand, yes, the deployment is success, or how can we understand, no, the deployment is not success, it's a failure. So we can notice that with the help of this logs. Whenever we deploy a bar file, this log of the operating system having the record of that, yes, it has been deployed successfully, or else we throw some error, Due to this reason, the deployment is not successful. So, how to monitor? Yes, we are, uh, we are going to see that in the next session. And analyzing the core dumps and heap dumps. Uh, as you are already in the industry, I am assuming that you already know what is a core dump and heap dump, right? Do you have I'm, I'm not really that much uh, aware of it. Okay. So, very simple. Core dump means if there is a process in the operating system unexpectedly terminated or brutally killed, then a core dump will be generated in the server. If I mean, if a process got killed abnormally, then core dump will be generated. Heap dump means if there is a memory issue of any application in the server, then heap dump will be generated. So this core dumps and heap dumps of IAB will be generated quite frequently. You said core dump is uh, when uh, application is uh, stopped improperly. Yes, exactly. When application stopped improperly, then core dump will be generated. Fine. Okay. Okay. So heap dump means when there are memory issues, whenever the system is running out of memory, out of resources, then heap dump will be generated. 
So these things also we are going to see at what case cold dump is generated, at what case heat dump is generated, and how to analyze the cold dumps and heat dumps. We are going to see this right now. Now analyzing the swap memory. Swap memory means a, a RAM memory. So how to analyze the RAM memory? We are going to see that. So that's what with the responsibilities of IIB admin. Now cold dumps and heat dumps. Yeah, let's see now. So if cold dump means if any process terminated abnormally or killed brutally, then associated cold dump will be generated and entry will be recorded in the sys logs. So whenever a cold dump is generated, its associated entry will be there in the sys log by mentioning a hey, cold dump has been generated in this part. So generally cold dump files will be having really hell lot of size. The huge the size will be really really huge. Okay, so that's why it's always keep an eye on you know, the cold dumps and heat dumps. And if a broker level, in broker level, sometimes broker will shut down abnormally due to various issues. Then associated quota will be generated in where MPSI path. So where MPSI is a broker working path that we are going to see in deep in the, from, from the future sessions. So, but the quota will be generated in where MPSI path. Whenever broker process shutdowns abnormally. Abend file entry will be required in the uh, syslog. Abend file associated with the quota. Whenever quota is generated, its abend file will be generated. Whenever we see an abend file entry in the syslog, it means that quota is generated in where NPSI file. Clear? Any questions? Mm. See, I know that would be very complex to understand, but uh, I mean, the terms are new for you. That's why it is taking some, some time for you to digest. I totally understand it. But uh, understand one thing, cold dump things, if any process killed abnormally, then cold dump will be generated. And then abend file entry will be there in a syslog. Abend file means suggest a cold dump entry. That's it. Now, the, the cold dump, the cold dump and the, um... Uh, heat dump is I, I think that, that I'm, I'm fine with that because uh, core dump is, is like core dump is created always when something abruptly happens in the process so, so mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. how we get the core dump. Uh, mm -hmm. heat, heat dump is actually when the, the thing is like a uh, spike of CPU happens. Exactly. Uh, but this abend file uh, I never heard of it. In that. Can you explain it? Uh, see, Abin file is something. So tell me one thing. Whenever cold dump is generated, how can we know cold dump is generated? What 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 created you say? Okay. Whenever a cold dump is generated, how can we know cold dump oh, is generated? You said port conflict. Sorry. You said port conflict. No, not code complete. I am saying, for example, right now a process has been killed abnormally and code dump is generated. Okay. Now, how do we understand core dump is generated? Um, By referring to abend file, we can understand core dump is generated. Abend file is just an index to core dump. Okay, in the syslog, whenever we see append file entry, append entry, this append file having core dump creation and what is the reason why core dump is generated, those entries will be there in the append file. Okay. That's what the append file is. So, right now, do not concentrate on the append file much because this is the so, demo session. Yeah. So, is it append file is something is in the syslog or it is like kind of syslog itself no it's not a syslog it is just an entry in the syslog that's it okay okay so right now do not think more about to understand about abend file because that may lead to a confusion this is just an introduction session we have not started our course yet. when we started the course yes you will be getting the things internal okay okay thank you no problem. Now heap dump. So heap dump is a memory issue. 
if any process is running out of memory then associated heat dump will be generated and we can analyze the heat dump using heat analyzer software ibm has provided a software called heat analyzer with the help of heat analyzer we can analyze our heat dump file when we upload our heat dump file into heat analyzer then heat analyzer will analyze will analyze and it will show you the information due to this issue heat dump is generated so that we can start our troubleshoot that is what heat dump is so cool mm -hmm. dumps and heat dumps are very very bigger in size we need to do housekeeping of them on a regular basis that's the important thing the thing is in var mtsi where the broker file system broker working file system cold dumps and heat dumps are generated definitely they would be generated with a huge size one file can have even 5 gb 10 gb also i have seen the situations in the companies where i was working so if you don't clean up var mtsi will come to 100% full and your broker may go down which will again cause to another severity issues so it's an important thing whenever code is generated clear that delete that not needed so okay so so is it like uh, uh keep reproducing the same log now in the zen is that how it it, it fills the, the the space or uh how how this core dump is like uh, gonna um no, cold dump dump is the way you say it. okay so let me answer so core dump is generated whenever a broker process abnormally terminated if the broker process not terminated abnormally then we don't have the question of core dumps core dumps won't be generated because your broker is up and running fine since long there is no abnormal termination of your broker then cold dump is not going to be generated the question is whenever a broker process terminated by the operating system abnormally or if a broker terminated by itself due to some issue then only the cold dump will be generated if we shut down the broker in a healthier manner, then there is no question of cold ups. Fine. Yeah, so that is always stored in uh, in this pass, the one which says the var uh, MQS. Yes, that, that's right. That, is that a standard? Yes, that's the standard. Uh, okay, var MQSI. So this var mkse file system, I will tell you in the training session during the IAB installation in Linux operating system, we are going to discuss about var mkse. Okay. 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 Now heat dumps that is related to the memory. Whenever uh, memory issues are happen, memory I mean broker is running out of memory, then heat dumps will be generated. So. The one you are seeing on the screen right now, these are the comments of AAB. So, but we are not going to discuss all the commands. We are going to discuss the main commands only. So, just like, uh, where is it? Okay, MQSA create broker, MQSA change properties, MQSA create configurable service, MQSA create execution group. MQSI CVP, MQSI delete broker, MQSI delete execution group, MQSI deploy, MQSI list, MQSI profile, MQSI read bar, MQSI report broker. MQSA report properties, MQSA DB params, MQSA start, MQSA start message flow, MQSA start, and MQSA start message flow. The commands which are highlighted by me right now 
those are the regular and very very frequent commands we are going to use in our real time the remaining things very rare now what okay. about uh, this uh, mqsi web service web web user admin this is where you give access to the developers yeah uh what is it mqsi web right on the last uh this yeah. one yeah. yep uh to say you frankly in my career i have never used this command yeah, because yeah. i have seen this it. Must... this is where they give access to, to people like if Sorry, you want to, this is where if you want to give access to let's say if you you are uh iib administrator and if uh, mm -hmm. um i am like any employee so mm -hmm. you use this command this to give me an access to console and at the same time if uh, there is a server uh aix server mm -hmm. this, this is uh, actually this this one they they they, this syntax they use it on AIX server and then uh, uh, they give access to people like according to the roles they have. Okay, so the thing is mostly I work with the Linux operating system for the message broker. So I, I, I never used it in my career. I have never seen this usage because to give the access to other employees in the broker in some service, we used to have different mechanisms, not with this thing anyway i'll try to figure it out what command exactly you prefer and then i can come back to you on this okay okay and the other one is uh, uh -huh. do you have uh, uh let me go so um, okay like where you configure like uh, yeah, it's right here, uh, MQSI Kashi admin. MQSI Kashi. On the first row, the, the last. This yeah, one. I think is that, is that where we configure the global Kashi? That's right. This is the where we will configure the cache memory of that particular broker and all. But the thing is, this command, I'm sure this command won't be useful because these days cache memory comes in built with the operating systems itself in the older versions of operating system like linux 6 or ax uh, older versions this thing may be useful but the latest version of operating system this command won't be needed because the cache memory comes the cache memory comes with the inbuilt of the operating system that will op the operating system will manage the cache memory of each and every application which is installed in the operating system okay okay but but you are right this is for building this is for managing the cache memory of the broker you are right okay. so this command i have used very long even I forget the syntax also now because for the last six, seven years I am not using this command. I have never seen this because now everything is managed internally by the operating system. Okay, I think most of the command is you put it right here. I mean, the one on the IT on the screen, most of them are uh, useful. Um, right. Like the one which says MQSI apply bar override. I think this, this one is uh, relevant because. Uh, if there is version one which is already deployed and then you are going to deploy another version like second version I think you have to use this um, uh, <laughs> no. no, this command is to overwrite the existing bar file with the additional properties for example Developer has shared a bar file now we deployed them now uh -huh. developer is saying that hey there is a mistake in my bar file We need to change these properties can you override my bar file with the properties file which I have shared here? Now, with the properties file, we are going to override the bar file. The, the, in that case, we are going to use in case I apply bar override. I mean, yeah. instead of, instead of uh, deploying the entire bar file, only those properties file we are going to deploy. That will be easy. So, there, in case I apply bar override, will come into the share. Okay, okay. 
<clears throat> MQSI broker. Okay, this is where we add broker instances. The one who says MQSI add broker instances. No, no, no. Forget about this. This is something advanced. We are not going to touch this. Mm. This is, comes in the multi instance broker, not to our regular operations. Okay. Uh, the one who says in the MQ services, that one is for uh, message queue, MQ. Uh, which one you were talking about? Next to the MQ, as, uh, I mean, one step up from the one we talked earlier. MQSI add broker instances. No, MQSI add broker instances no, for yes. multi. One level up, one level up. This yeah. one, NMQ service. Mm -hmm. No, this NMQ service is to bring down any MQ service of the broker. But to bring down MQ service, we are not supposed to use this command. We are going to use MQ command. We are going to end the queue manager. Yeah, okay. Okay. I get you. I get you. Okay. Fine. So these are the commands which we are going to see in our regular, in our daily professional life. So let's concentrate on these commands. Mm -hmm. okay. can you, can you, now, can you, excuse me. Can yeah. you can bring them back? Sorry? Uh, yep. I'm good now. Thank you. Okay. Fine. Now, after the session, you will be able to understand what is the necessity of IIB when we have in queue and what is a broker and how to create and how to modify its properties and what are broker processes technology flow what is an execution group how to create them how to delete them and how to control the properties then what is a message flow and how to deploy roles of iib admin what is an integration toolkit and how to work with the integration toolkit codons and deep terms. so these are the things we are going to learn once you we complete the training so this training is going to give you a four to five of IAB admin guide, what kind of knowledge he will be having, that kind of knowledge you will you are going to gain with this training. Now let me share you the course syllabus which we are going to cover and then we can wind up the session. So this is the course outline. So the prerequisites are going to be need to have good knowledge on Linux operating system and need to have a very, very good knowledge on the IBM MQ administration. Because if we don't know IBM MQ, we even cannot understand what is IAB. It's it's a mandatory thing. Okay. So it may take around 15 to 20 hours. So there are around 10 modules. So the module one is going to be the introduction session, which we have completed just now. Then IAB installation. Now uninstallation. Then the technical overview which you have seen in this session. Now the command line interface, it means how to create a broker, how to start a broker, how to see the properties, how to delete them. And in the execution group, how to create them, how to start them, how to stop them, and how what the properties and the JVM configurations of execution group and how to build PGs. And the bar file deployment, then the data source name, where the database coming to be shared, then the security of a message broker, then message broker integration and development toolkit, and then the real time scenarios. This is what we are going to see in the entire training. In addition, if you are looking for something else in unit this concept also, you can let me know so that we can add that. Yeah, sure. So where are we gonna see the MQ uh, thing is at least highlight of it. Sorry? Where are we gonna see the MQ. Uh, MQ is not in this course. This is designed for only IAB. MQ is a separate course. Okay. Mm. So in that MQ course, we are going to see. So the course content of MQ is like this. Can you can so, you send me can you send me this M, 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 MQ course outline you have? I mean, send me both. Uh, course outlines so let me go through the, the yeah the, the, you, you can you can check with the coordinator for that he can send you the course content of MQ on the course content of IAB okay because, okay, because I, I'm familiar with um, 
with the MQ. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if not like as admin, I'm uh, almost uh, like I can create the queue managers, I can create the queues, I can put the MSA to queues and the get it from mm -hmm. the queues and uh, even try to do kind of a small clustering. So uh -huh. I think for IIB in training, I think I, I believe it is, if, if not enough, I think it is a good uh, background. Yeah, that's right. So course content can be shared with the training coordinator once you ask him. So the thing is, once you go through the MQ course content and IIB course content, now you will get a clarity. Okay, what I have, what should I learn? You will get that kind of thing. When you have yeah. that kind of thing, You're right, then yeah. the training part would be very easy for both of us. You're right, yeah, yeah. All right, so that's it with the demo. So remaining things you can discuss with the coordinator and then uh, we can start our regular sessions. Okay, and... Um... <clears throat> Mm, hold on, let me. So, well, when we install uh, IIB, are we going to install it on? Um, uh, no, for installing IIB, there is a procedure which we are going to cover in our next session. Okay. I mean, like to make, um, I'm asking you to make my computer ready for that. Uh, can we do, can can we install it on um... that? Okay, good thing. Okay, so in this training, we are going to provide you the needed software also. In I mean the VMware and the Linux operating system ISO image copy and IAB software. Everything we are going to share with you, and okay. we are also going to share you how to configure that VMware, how to configure. Linux ISO and how to install a heavy in your machine and you will be having a lifetime access for those and you can do the hands-on at any time whenever you want and whatever the stuff that is going to explain in the training you can do hands-on practice in your computer we are going to share with you all those things and also you guys are going to provide me this uh, uh, session recording this yeah Yes, every session is going to be recorded in the cloud operating system and you will be sharing this video also. You will be having a lifetime access for this video. Okay, okay. It's a can, we change, can we change the meeting tool from go to meeting to like um, Zoom? Because uh, I hear like a lot of echoes. Um, sometimes this is very difficult to hear what you say. I think Zoom is more clear that you can discuss with the coordinator for that it's Ooh, decided beta. i'm not supposed to decide all these things okay Ooh, you... beta, beta, beta. what is his name yes vasu v-a-s-u okay vasu okay okay yes. i will talk to vasu thank you so much uh what sure. is your name what is your name by the way uh, okay i think i forgot to introduce myself okay let me give an introduction about myself <laughs> nah, uh, Okay, so my name is Mohan Krishna. You can call me Mohan. Yeah, Mohan. Okay. Okay. So I'm a senior consultant and trainer for IBM MQ, IAB, and Kafka System Administration. But this training we are going to concentrate on IAB only. We are not going to touch MQ on Kafka because those are different separate trainings. So you are also familiar with the Kafka. Yes, right. Okay. I have more than five years of experience with Kafka. Okay. What about IIS? Do you guys have IIS too? No, IIS, I do not have the experience. Okay. And I'm an expert in the corporate trainings, online trainings, and classroom trainings. So I have given n number of corporate trainings, n number of online trainings, and millions of classroom trainings. And in my experience, I have worked for the investments projects, banking projects, and retail projects. So this is something about myself. Hope you got some idea about me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Thank you, Mohan. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. Thanks for attending the demo. And Thank you so much. We'll be in the next sessions. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, see you soon. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah.